needs to meet, but she took advantage. That's right. Hello, welcome to Styrus Homestead. I'm Zach. And I'm Wyatt. That's right. So I got Wyatt out here with me. T-Bone, we have made a decision. He's going to the butcher. And you're going to be a fine piece of T-Bone cut, Mr. T-Bone. Yeah, you are. Remember, buddy, it was your call. You made a decision. So, called up um, our butcher. Thankfully, they can get us in in less than a month, which is great news. So about January 25th, I think is what the day was, something like that. He is going to be food for our table. I know, man. I, we talked about this a long time ago. You had two options. Be good bull, respect fences. You get to stay and breed. Don't do that. You become dinner. So that means we got a month to get through with his antics. So what Watt and I have done is we have made the fence stronger, as Watt was saying off camera. <laughs> um, so this was his prime spot of getting out. This is where we feed and do all that good stuff. So we have ran a second line on the outside of the other one to make it wider. So that's going to make him not, he's going to realize he can't clear that unless he powers through it. But got a better power bank. So we got one that covers five miles. I got one that covers 10 miles for the bigger part of the pasture that we still got to put up. Um, but now we have full blown power. Yeah. And so I think that was part of the reason that we was having issues. My other ones were struggling to keep up in this winter time and I wasn't having full power. I was only having about half. So he was just walking straight through the fence, but this will solve that problem. And those are always valuable to have. Um, but now we have the double fence, as you can tell here, see how it's lined up like that. That's going to help him visually understand that he can't reach and can't clear that um, with his jumps. Cause that's how he's primarily getting out. But section one complete. We um we made it uh we were using two thousand but now we're at eight thousand which is for cows. That's right. Okay, T-Bone is done. I have gotten all the wire and all the outlets undone in the store. Um, so now I can go in and start actually doing it the right way. Um, but when you're a farmer, you're juggling all kinds of uh, projects at once. So it's like you have to break it down into tasks. So task one was getting everything ripped out. Task two is starting to putting it back in uh, the correct way. So that'll be tomorrow's work because it's about to storm it anyways. Um, and we still have some pantry stuff that we need to do. So that's where we're headed to next. You need to meet, but you take advantage. That's right. All right. So, <clears throat> so we're back in the pantry. Um, and something that we're wanting to do is we have a fridge in our bedroom. Yeah. Um, it's a really big one. We had bought it brand new for our old place. We got here. There's already a real nice one. So it's been that thing that like, keeps being moved around. Um, but it is big and bulky. However, when you're a farmer, especially dairy farmer, you got to have a second fridge that is dedicated to the milk. Um, so this corner where the freeze dryer is, is where that's going to go. Now the freeze dryer is going to go right here in this in-between space between the shelves and the corner cabinet that we have going in. So it's going to go right there. That's right. To get this fridge out, I have to take the door off.
All right, we had to take a, not really a break, but the fridge is in. Um, our freezer needed to be thawed, so we're letting it thaw. Um, so it's kind of a tally crazy mess in there. Um, so quick little change of event. Jen posted a while ago this beautiful roast. Um, they, they, we were just showing y'all what we were having for dinner, but everybody's response was insane. Like everybody's like, I need that roast in my life. Um, so we thought we'd give you just like a quick rundown of what it is. She's making a little bit different, but the I think what you all wanted was primarily that gravy and the mashed potatoes. Yeah. Um, but we'll show you how we're doing it real quick. So first things first, your roast. Cook it however you want to cook your roast. It's not the main, you wouldn't say that's what makes this thing. I'm no, sure. I mean, I've done I've done this exact recipe in an Insta pot, in a crock pot, in the oven. So that yeah. part doesn't matter. Right, so for our roast, I will put the dry, the rub, uh, down below. Once you've got your rub on your roast, you're just gonna sear it on each side for about two minutes. And how we're doing it this round is we're actually going oven at 500 degrees. Um, once it's up to temperature, we just pop this roast in there and then we turn the heat off. Um, and then for two and a half hours, it'll sit there and cook. This is more of a uh, prime rib kind of style, would you say? Yeah. Yeah, so it's kind of a prime rib style. So it's gonna be sliced rather than- But it's a chuck roast. But it's a chuck roast. Cheap piece of meat, but you take it fancy. That's right. Um, well, the last one was just an Instant Pot roast and it was all shredded and everything. So she is now getting the mashed potatoes, which is something that you all need to pay attention to. So the first thing isn't anything out of the ordinary. Nope. Wash, wash and peel, um, put your potatoes. We're only doing four because we're a small family. So we don't need that much. We don't want a week's worth of mashed potatoes. <laughs> I can eat them though. Nobody <laughs> likes leftover mashed potatoes. So we're just gonna get them boiling and get them soft and then we'll show you. Yep, there. I'm gonna bring them to a bowl and then I'm gonna turn them down and just let them sit probably as long as this is cooking. It'll be fine. Okay, so you just saw us put it on a roasting rack and in our lodge Dutch oven that we have. So we're just giving this a little bit longer. One thing about gas stoves, well, at least this gas stove, it doesn't tell you when it's up to 10. So it's 500 degrees, so we're just giving it a little bit extra long time just to make sure. And it's in, and it's off. Wow, it definitely cooked. It's done, it's well. 156. It's supposed to be at 130, so it's good. All right, Jen, we got the roast out and it's absolutely fantastic. Jen's now making the brown gravy. So to do that, um, you just take some of the drippings, which is about a fourth cup of the drippings, add two cups of broth, um, add a fourth cup of flour, and then you also get about a little bit of wish sauce, just however much you think that you might like. And then you're gonna whisk that over medium pie heat for about three minutes. All right, we're gonna put some butter. This is what makes the mashed potatoes great. We're gonna put some sour cream. General idea, about how much? Measure with your heart. <laughs> Measure with your heart. If I had to guess, it looks about like a fourth cup. We're gonna do some half and a half. And then we're gonna start mashing for a minute and then we'll add the other thing. Mm. Watch out. Timer's up. Okay, so I'm gonna add some more butter. You just kind of do this as you go. You just gotta get how much you want. You gotta, everybody likes butter. You gotta recipe it with your heart. Yep. But these are your ingredients. Give you all the tools to succeed, but ultimately it's up to you right. to make these the right way. Well, half and half. Mm -hmm. Watch out. One more sour cream. And here is the star of the show. Everything but the bagel seasoning. So you're gonna skip putting in your garlic or your onion powder. You're not gonna put any of that in because that's all in here. And then it's so good. Probably the best mashed potatoes you've ever had. Yeah, you'll never want a different one. Yeah. There you go best mashed potatoes in the world you'll never want anything else i leave mine a little lumpy i don't like baby food so we <laughs> we do a few lumps in our mashed potatoes they're perfect 
stomach. And then right beside her, we got about the world's best brown gravy you're ever gonna see. So you just keep stirring until you get to kind of the texture that you want, which we're pretty close. The one thing to remember, brown gravy, you don't want as like chunky, I guess, as white gravy. You want it to be a little runny, but also a little thick. And that's about right where we are. There you go. It's that simple to make the world's best roast beef and mashed potatoes and gravy. Like I promise once you have this, you are not going to want it any other way. Again. All right. I will make sure to try to get everything that she has like given me actual amounts, but I'll definitely make sure the ingredients are down below. Make it. Let us know what you think. If you haven't subscribed, make sure to down below. We love y'all. Until the next one. Bye. Bye.